Hey gang, welcome to a new Lons TV. A couple things I want to talk about today. The first one, I am catching up on Boardwalk Empire. I sort of gave up two or three episodes in. I think it was halfway through the third episode of the season. Uh, and then the season finished, and everybody was talking about how great it was, so I went back, and now I'm watching the whole first season all the way through. I'm almost done. I'm like three episodes away from the end. So I'll reserve doing like a big review video until I'm done the whole show, but it's slow, right? I mean, we can all agree... As well done as it is, and as beautifully shot as it is, and as well acted as it is, and I love the level of historical detail they're getting in, in both the visuals and the just the script and the references and how of that world it feels, but I mean, wow, like one 60-minute episode of that show feels like a two-hour movie. It's just, it's dense, and it's really deliberate, and it's, like, slow. I mean, there will be sequences where it's, like, three minutes of Michael Shannon sitting with, like, his hands folded at the desk, and then he'll open a drawer, and he'll take out an envelope, and he'll put it in the back, and he'll close the drawer, and he'll fold his hands again, and it's like, and scene. And it's like, that was four minutes of my life watching that. Like, I feel like one movie I can sort of get my mind into a place where it's like, okay, this is going to be very deliberately paced and maybe a little slow, but it's going to be worthwhile, so I'm going to stick with it, and I'm fine. And, like, most people will complain about movies being slow, and I don't care. But when it's an hour-long show, and it's like, week to week, and you have to, like, want to watch the next episode after the one you just watched finished. It's, like, it just feels draining. I, I feel, I feel after I watch, like, two back-to-back -back that, like, I need a nap. Uh, so, you know, I'm, I'm having a little bit of a hard time. Most shows I would have devoured by now. Uh, you know, I could, you can watch them quick back-to-back, -back, but this one I'm sort of spacing out because it's, it's just it's so deliberate, and, I mean, there's a lot to love about it. I do feel like Steve Buscemi's a little out of place, but I'll talk about that when I review the whole show. Uh, anyway, I just, it's just an observation I'm making. The main thing I want to review today is The Fighter, the new David O. Russell film with Christian Bale and Mark Wahlberg and the brothers, and, uh, you know, it's a, it's a true story. Uh, so there was this, the older brother, Dickie, uh, was played by Christian Bale. He sort of had a shot at being, like, a champion. He once fought Sugar Ray Leonard, and there's some controversy about whether Sugar Ray actually, like, was knocked down or slipped and fell. But anyway, he had, like, a moment of glory. Now he's addicted to crack. And HBO, in the movie, HBO is making a film about the character uh, about his crack addiction. Uh, and then Mark Wahlberg plays the other brother, who's younger and who's sort of, you know, uh, trying to be a fighter, but he's kind of become a stepping stone, like a rung on the way for other fighters to move up. He loses a lot. He doesn't have a great record. He doesn't have a great reputation. So it's about these two brothers and their family and, you know, Wahlberg trying to sort of make it. And he's got to kind of learn to be assertive and leave the family behind because they're sort of leeches on him and... Uh, and he make, you know, he makes a new girlfriend who's played by Amy Adams, playing this woman, Charlene. And it's all happening in this very hard scrabble, blue-collar community of Lowell, Massachusetts. It's happened in the early 90s there. And like, it's a good story. I mean, it's a little familiar, but hey, this is what like almost every boxer, this is their story. They were from some blue-collar area and they worked really hard and they wanted to get out of the neighborhood without, you know, resorting to crime or drugs or playing basketball or all the other sort of generic ways to get out of the, those neighborhoods. Uh, and they start boxing, and, you know, there's adversity, and maybe they don't think they're good enough, and then they become boxers. So, so you can't hold that against the movie. But uh, at the same time, it just it overplays this story. Like, it wants to be this intimate, gritty, family, indie drama. And that's how it sees itself, and that's how it's shot. And it's shot very well, and there's, like, a lot of handheld, and it's very f familiar for David O. Russell. Um... And it's, but it's just, it, it's so melodramatic that it's really more like a big Hollywood sensibility. Like, you know, Wahlberg's family was holding it back, especially his domineering mother, who's Melissa Leo, and then Bale, who's addicted to drugs and sort of, but demands to be part of everything he does in terms of boxing, because he's his mentor and his leader. And, uh... And they're just so overblown villains. I mean, it's if they were more nuanced characters, if there was more real conflict there, and there was, like, the whole movie, you're thinking exactly what Charlene says when she comes into Mickey's life, which is, you gotta get away from your family. It's crazy. And you're thinking that in the audience, too. You're like, why, why would anybody stick around for this kind of treatment over and over again when there's so many golden opportunities to move on. And that's the other thing, too, is that there's not that sense of adversity that you need during this movie because Mickey keeps being offered ways out of his predicament. Like, old guys keep coming up to him like, listen, you're a great fighter. I want to take you to Vegas and we're going to make you a star. And then he got to go, no, because his brother, like, 
you know, he can't because his brother's on drugs and he's got to stay and help the family. And it just plays out over and over again. And it's, it's so overdone and it's so... Uh, it just doesn't build tension and it doesn't build sympathy for, for the character in the way you sense that O. Russell, David O. Russell really wanted to. Uh, the other big issue I had, there's a couple I had, but the other big one I had is it feels really condescending. It's, it wants to feel like it's, this is realistic, like this is how life is in Lowell, Massachusetts. And instead it comes off... It like Jersey Shore-ish. Like they've picked the most ridiculous like South Boston stereotypes imaginable and they've thrown them all together and said this is this guy's family. So it's just they're all sitting around with the crazy poofy hair at like two in the afternoon smoking cigarettes, drinking bud cans and like he brings his girlfriend out like get that skank out my house, she's a hua and all this stuff. And it's like, I mean, I'm sure some of his sisters maybe are sort of like that. And behind a lot of these stereotypes, there are always nuggets of of truth like there is something there but a good movie would be able to look beyond the stereotype and find the truth like like what these people are really like and i feel like um gone baby gone that ben affleck uh, movie and even the town in some ways like there have been movies that have looked at this same community or this same sort of community and have managed to see beyond the south boston like nonsense stereotypes this movie does not and it wants to be about this family but you can't take this family seriously because they're just they're like saturday night live versions of uh, of these characters rather than these real real people uh it's at its best when it's uh, about the tragedy of dick eklund uh the christian bale character being addicted to crack after years of success as an athlete uh, obviously, Bale physically has just done it again, where he makes himself look emaciated like a crack addict. He's it's a lot of ticks and bug guys, and but you know he's playing a crack addict. It feels very it feels very real when he when it's about him and the scene is focused on him. Uh, the movie, you know, it, it's not a triumph, but it works. It works like watching like a, a movie that, about an episode of Intervention. You know, like this is the tragedy that is drug use, and it happens to millions of Americans all the time, and it's compelling just on that basis alone. Uh, it's odd to me that that Mark Wahlberg was really the driving force. He's been wanting to make Mickey Ward's story for years. He was the driving force behind this project, and he has the much less interesting role. His, his character is very passive. The whole movie is really about how he's too passive, and he needs to step up and come into his own. But even there's a there's a scene or two where he finally gets to do that, gets to assert himself to both Charlene, his girlfriend, and his brother and his mother. And even in that scene, it's the big scene. It's the scene Wahlberg really, really must have wanted to play. It, it comes off flat. It comes off he comes off whiny and petulant. Like you guys, come on, let me be a boxer, okay? And and it's like this was the reason that you made this film to make this big pivotal scene. And it just it, it's kind of limps out there and, and ends the movie and uh the boxing scenes are not particularly memorable they're not poorly done uh he makes the interesting decision to film all the boxing scenes as if you were watching it on tv so they look totally like a tv broadcast of this fight um and i'm not even sure if all these fights would have been like watched a lot on tv or like reality of the situation but it's an interesting choice i don't know exactly why he did it it doesn't really add much but it's a, it's okay and uh the movie's not terrible it's just not great and i feel bad you know, kind of kicking it because it's obviously really well intentioned and it's a good story and these are real guys, but it's it's not it's not great and it's not rousing and it's it's really nothing you'd want from any of these movies. It's not compelling enough as a family drama. It's not rousing enough as a sports movie. Uh, it just kind of it just kind of is, and it's a, another good showcase for Christian Bale doing a, doing a nice performance. So that is my review of the fighter. That is this episode of Lons TV. I will be back tomorrow with another new review. Haven't decided what I'm going to do yet. I will figure something out. I will see you then.